Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. As you saw in the title, we're going to be modifying a spare subframe that I have for the E30. Now, if you saw the last video where we went to the track, the E30 had no issues whatsoever, but there is a few things that we can improve to make the chassis better now that we're making some more power, and the biggest thing being grip. Now, my car does have a good bit of natural camber just from being lowered. I do have subframe riser bushings, which places the subframe in the chassis a little bit lower to try and compensate for some camber, but there's still a decent amount in there. But I've been using that to my advantage without having any power over the last couple years. It's just one of those things, having the camber as well as the skinny tires I've been running have allowed me to keep wheel speed up and hang with some of these other guys. So now that we're actually making some power, we need to try and get as much grip as possible. So what we're gonna do is weld on not only reinforcements to strengthen the subframe and the trailing arms, but I got some camber and toe adjustment tabs from Garagistic that I'm gonna weld onto the subframe so I can actually adjust my trailing arm and set my alignment properly. Now what comes in the kit from Garagistic is four sets of these adjusters that you weld in place where you mount your trailing arms at. Now these tabs are ribbed, so you do not have to worry about them slipping under heavy load. And the way that this works is you have an inner and an outer mounting point for your trailing arm. What you're gonna do for the inner mounting point is weld these tabs vertically so you can have camber adjustment. And what you do on the outer tabs is weld them horizontally so you can have toe adjustment. Also what I got from Garagistic is some reinforcement plates for the subframe as well as the trailing arms. For the subframe it comes with three plates to reinforce the diff mounting points and the trailing arm kit comes with a plate to reinforce the actual trailing arm as well as some half inch pipe. We'll get to this later in the video when I remove the old subframe and we'll weld these on. But for now what I want to go ahead and do is start with these differential mounting point reinforcements. We're going to get some of this cleaned up to bare metal and we'll get these welded on. Now what I'm going to be welding with is a Hobart Handler 140. This is a 110 volt unit that I recently picked up. These have tons of good reviews online. I've heard nothing but good things about them. So it should be a pretty good setup for just, you know, easy automotive stuff in my garage that I want to use. Okay, so I have the settings on the welder at what it recommends for this thickness of metal. Keep in mind, I am no professional welder here. I've done my roll cage and some other tubing in my car, and I've always been good enough to make it work, so we'll see how this turns out. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna work on are the adjusters themselves that go on to the trailing arm mounting points. This is the inner point, and out towards the outside of the subframe is obviously the outer point. This inner mounting point, you wanna put these vertically, like so, so you can adjust them up and down. This will be for your camber. Okay, so the way you want to do this is you obviously don't want to add any negative camber, which is going to be down towards the subframe. So you want these tabs pulled up as high as you can, so all the adjustment is for negative camber. So I'll pull these all the way, making sure that they are in fact all the way up, and they are. And you also have these little brackets here that will just be for some support on the top side. What you also need to check is that these are clocked properly. You can hold these little plates up here, look down and see if you have it aligned. Thank you. 
Okay, so here is the first adjuster on. They're not terrible. I am gonna have to grind inside where this mounts just to get it flush, but it's all welded up. All right, guys, I'm gonna stop this video for just a second. As you see, I'm doing this little tap and zap method of welding for a couple reasons. One, I couldn't really dial in any good settings on the welder, and two, for some reason, I'm feeling like I have to try and make it look good for you guys, which at the end of the day, I know really doesn't matter. All that matters is that I get good penetration and that these welds are strong. Now, after chatting with my brother for a little bit, he helped me dial in the settings on the welder, and you'll see in some clips coming up that I'm gonna pass over all of these welds, getting good heat into it, and making sure that it is nice and strong. So bear with me. I know this isn't really the best way of doing it, but we'll correct it here shortly. We also have these reinforcements that are for these mounting points. We'll go ahead and get welded on. Okay, so I tweaked the settings a bit more and this is looking more like I want it to. Okay, so I went ahead and got the reinforcements for the trailing arm mounting points. Now we can go ahead and start working on the outside mounting points for the toe correction. Okay, so what I want to do for the toe adjustment is just center these holes, unlike the camber plates where I try to get all the adjustability I can. This one, I don't really need to take that much out. So I'm just gonna center it on the slots so I have adjustability in and out. All right guys, so I got most of the subframe done now. I have all of the camber and toe adjustment tabs welded. I have all the gussets to reinforce the trailing arm mounts attached as well. Some of it's really ugly, some of it's halfway decent, but it should all hold just fine. Like I've said, I am no professional by any means, and I just started to get the settings dialed near the end of this whole thing, so. I probably should have pulled out some scrap metal and did some practice, but I don't really have any scrap metal right now, so we're just kind of winging it on this one. It's not gonna be seen, it's gonna be under the car, so. Cool, we'll uh, get this thing pulled outside, we'll get it all cleaned off and get it prepped to paint. The sub frame all painted, it's back together, doesn't look too bad. I did just a rough 
scuff to prep this thing. I'm really not searching for perfection here. I really just wanted to get a couple coats on it to make sure it wouldn't rust. So we got it all one color and we're gonna pull the subframe that's in the E30, get the trailing arms removed, get those reinforced and get those onto this subframe and we'll get it all back in the car.